Welcome to Arranging with Judy. Today I'm going to show you the just how to get started, what type of tools you need, and how to just start out from scratch. So if you, assuming you don't have anything uh, and you've never arranged flowers before and you just want to do something to put on your table or you know to um, give to a friend or whatever, uh, you, you need a few basic things, okay? The first thing I want to tell you about is a pair of cutters. And they're just clippers. You can get them at a garden uh, supply or um, you can get them from um, one of the big box stores. You could uh, order them online, I'm sure. Uh, they're just for cutting heavier stems, maybe hydrangeas, branches, um, big, big fat flowers with thick stems. A lot of times you'll want something like this. Uh, I have a pair of wire cutters. I got these from the hardware store. I think they actually may have come from Sears back in the day. I've had them that long. They're craftsmen. And they're just for cutting wires, basically. Uh, the scissors are very, very sharp. They're from Costco. <laughs> they're a Scotch brand. They're titanium. They're very reasonable, like Mm, three for $9.95, I think, something like that. And uh, they cut ribbon very nicely. And uh, I like to have a nice, clean, sharp pair of scissors for ribbon. This is a pair of utility scissors that I'll use to uh, cut tape, cut uh, foliage, you know, if I want to, you know, make a, a different shape out of a leaf or whatever, I'll use these rather than these because I like to keep these clean for my uh, ribbon. So then there's this pair of scissors they have. They're by Klaus, and I've had these for a really long time, too. They have serrated edges here on the sides of the uh, blades, and they'll cut wire and thick stem things also. Um, but, I mean, I can, take, uh, I can take some wires, and I can cut several at a time with these, like that. And uh, this is a pretty heavy wire. So these are kind of nice to have around if you want. Like if you're making a corsage or a boot mirror or whatever and you need to cut off a bunch of wires together, these are the ones you want to use. And then I like to have a knife. And this is a uh, folding florist knife. And the reason I like it to be folding is because then if I uh, get in a hurry and I answer the phone and I shove it in my pocket, I want to make sure I close it up first because when I reach in there, I don't want to cut my hand off. And these are really sharp when they come in. You can order these online too. Um, uh, Swiss Army makes them and a, a couple other companies too. But you can just uh, Google folding florist knife and you can uh, order this. Um, one thing I want to tell you because I did tell you already that it's very sharp. If you're a beginner and you um, get one of these knives, you might want to put some a band-aid, maybe a preemptive um, protection to make sure that if you do like slip with the knife, you're not going to put a big cut in your thumb. Um, or sometimes we'll take and very gently just rub it on something that would dull it a tiny bit. You don't want to dull it a lot. So maybe, you know, like a, a brick or something, just very gently, just to get the really, really mean edge off of it. Uh, maybe you've never cut a flower before either. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a tutorial. First of all, when I go out to the garden and I cut a flower, I, I have a bucket of water, of very, very clean water. I bleach out my bucket, I always bleach my tools, and I'll take, and I'll take all of the excess foliage off of it so that when it goes into the water, um, it will keep all the bacteria down. So when I cut a flower, after when I cut it out in the garden, I'll probably use these. And I just snip it and, and strip off the, the leaves and plop it in my bucket. But if I'm putting it in an arrangement, a lot of times I like to have a nice clean cut here that I can insert the flower into. So when you take your knife, you hold your knife like this, and you take and hold the stem like this. And you take the knife and you brace your thumb against this stem and then you pull and slice. Don't slice into your thumb. Keep your thumb off to the side and then you just pull and slice and you shouldn't cut your thumb. So uh, that's, that's flower cutting. And I think we'll move on to uh, segment two. Thank you. 
So now we'll go on to uh, the supplies. Um, some of the supplies you might need, I like to have a quarter inch clear tape. This one's made by Oasis. I think you can order this online too. And this is for taping vases. Um, mostly that's the only thing I ever use it for if I need a grid on a vase. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, here's um, another Oasis product. It's um, a floral tape also. It's an adhesive and it works for, oh, you know, uh, taping vases, uh, taping um, think, uh, Oasis if you use foam. It's, it's good for securing that. So it's nice to have a roll of this. Also, you can tape your, if you do a hand bouquet, this is going to really securely tape your hand bouquet. Uh, sometimes I like to use um, twine or green wax string too for a, for a um, hand bouquet. So some of these things are redundant kind of, or they both do the same thing, but not always. So, but if you had a few of these and not all of them, you would still be okay. These are stem tapes and I like brown because sometimes I like to coat a, a wire with brown uh, tape and use it for grapevine or um, you know, securing things into baskets and securing stems into uh, of the edge of a, a, a vine. Um, these two I use for, um, if you do um, wedding work, uh, you might have to wire and tape flowers. And I'll show you how to do that too. Um, but I like to have the dark green for some, for some cases and I like the lighter green for some cases. If I'm if I'm uh, taping though uh, a stem, I like this better. I think it looks more close to you know the color of a real stem. So these are handy for wires. Um, we have chicken wire that I've been using chicken wire a lot lately because I'm trying to cut down on the whole foam thing. They're they're finding that the foam is not really all that sustainable. So the chicken wire comes on a big roll. This is florist chicken wire. It's coated with uh, like a green enamel paint. So it's not gonna rust as easily. Uh, it's, it comes on this roll and I cut some pieces that I use typically. You can buy this at the wholesale house or you could buy this from a, a florist. And it's, it's kind of mean and pokey too. So this is something that I would use these scissors here to uh, cut. So I'll show you how to use this later too. Um, we also have uh, available to us these really cool plastic uh, pillows, I guess you'd call them. They're, they're, a, they're a grid and they're kind of pillow shaped. And these um, come in an assortment of sizes. There's a large one and see they hook together so that you have, you know, it makes like a little, a little frog almost. Um, and here are some different sizes. These, I think you can order these online too. These might be Holly Chapel. I'm not sure. I know there are a lot of companies that make them now. Uh, I also just absolutely love the good old fashioned frogs that you can find in a, you know, a vintage store, um, sometimes even like a thrift store or something. And you can order the, like the Etsy people sell these a lot if you look online. The frogs, here's one that's even a, like a clear glass one and you you drop these down in the bottom usually of not a clear vase <laughs> of a you know a solid vase that you can't see through uh, and and I have never ever had to put a cling or any kind of like floral clay on the bottom of them to stick them to the bottom of a vase if you make your arrangement balanced, then they're going to sit, they're going to, and the, the metal ones especially are very heavy, so they'll sit fine in the bottom of your vase. Also, sometimes you'll want to use a pin holder when you don't have, um, when you, when you, when you don't have a lot of stems and you want them to be more upright, this is going to keep your, um, your, flowers upright. This is one that was vintage. I have never scraped all of this cling off, but I guarantee you the lady that did this did not have to do this. This thing weighs quite a bit and it would sit, if you make your arrangement balanced, 
it would sit fine in the bottom of your tray and you wouldn't need all of this clay. I kind of keep it just to laugh at it, you know. I have another one similar to that. Well, this one is similar and this one's kind of cool too. The, you can adjust what size you make. Um, usually, this usually comes off. It's not going to right now. But anyway, you can adjust the size of it. Um, to fit whatever your arrangement is. So these, uh, any of these vintage ones, I'm telling you, they're worth their weight in gold. If you can find them, nab them. Um, also, you'll want to use, you want to have some paddle wire. I usually have a couple of sizes of paddle wire. If you look, and this is another Oasis company thing, which you can probably order from their website online, I think. And this is a 24 gauge paddle wire. I also like to have a, like a 22 gauge paddle wire on hand. And it's just a big long string of wire on a paddle. They used to be a wooden paddle, but now they're plastic. So um, this is another uh, type of wire. Uh, usually I'll use this for, oh, making wreaths or making garlands or um, securing something to a pole. Uh, you just never know when you're going to need this. So it's, it's a handy thing too. And then if you're ever going to wire flowers, uh, I have several different weights of wire. The wire is sold by the gauge and the finer the gauge, the higher the number. No. Yeah. The higher the number. So this is 19. No, this is 18. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. This is 18 gauge. I don't usually get that. Um, so this is 18 gauge. It's very heavy. And the only thing I would probably use this for is like a, a sunflower that is just, just does not want to, you know, stand up and pay attention. It wants to lean over. Uh, or maybe some other heavy, heavy, heavy. Maybe like a snapdragon that has a really tiny stem, but a great big, you know, long flower on the top that makes it very heavy. Just sometimes a, a, a flower is going to need a little extra support. This 22 gauge is what I use most of the time. And this one I'll use for like a rose or a dahlia or, you know, and you don't have to wire all of your flowers. It's only if they're just not you know, cooperating the way you want them to, or if their heads are, well, like this one. This one, it looks droopy. If I place it in my arrangement this way, then it will look like it's stretching up for the light. Or even if I, if I placed it off to the side like this in my arrangement, it would look like it was reaching for the light. But if I put it in this way, it's just going to look like it's going to die. So sometimes you'll want to wire that. Um, if, if I have a hollow stem, I will want to take this and pierce through here. And let me see if I can do that to show you. And then push it down very, very gently through the center and then I can just cut it off with, with my wire cutters and then if you still have a little bit showing sometimes I'll take my knife and I'll just push it in I don't know if you can tell so um, then I push it in just a little bit more Okay, there you go. So um, then, uh, that's one way of wiring. If you have a hollow stem, that will work. If you don't have a hollow stem, like a rose, and this is a beautiful rose, it does not need to be wired. You can see it's very straight and lovely. But if it wasn't, then what I would do is I would place the wire right next to the head of the flower. Like, can you see? I'm trying to raise it up a little. Um, I would just pierce in like that, just as far enough to feel like it's in there. And then very gently wrap it around in between the leaves. And you don't have to wind it. See, I've only wound it like maybe two times. 
And then when you get to the end of the wire, you just bring it up so that it secures it. Can you see that? So that would uh, make your, your flower stand up and pay attention. Now, if you were doing wedding flowers, which I won't get into here, um, you, would, you would break off the stem. If you were doing a hand-tied bouquet, uh, you would break off the stem, and or, a, or a boutonniere, you would break it off and pierce through. But we'll do that another day. Uh, let's see. So in some cases, then, you need, this is a 24 gauge. And I like to use this a lot too. Um, I mean, even wiring pine cones to put on a garland at Christmas time, it's nice to have this 24 gauge because it's it doesn't it, it doesn't hurt as bad when you twist, you know. Um, so that's a good one. And then this is 26 gauge, and 26 gauge I would use for very fine foliages, and sometimes. Sometimes I'll take a 26 gauge. If I have a couple of flowers in an arrangement and they want to just go off and they don't want to play like I want them to, sometimes I'll take a 26 gauge and I'll cover it with a little bit of floral tape. You know, I'll just, um, maybe I should show how I tape. I don't know, I'm probably getting you confused, but sometimes I'll just, I place the, the wire on top of the tape and then I cover it over and then I twist with this hand and I, I hold my tape this way and I pull and twist at the same time and let the, the tape bead through those fingers and then I'll have this covered and it could sort of look like a vine and sometimes I'll just take that and I'll wrap it around a stem and attach it to another stem and then it'll keep those flowers right in place and then you can just, it, it just blends in with the arrangement and it looks like a vine. So. That's what I would use these wires for. Um, I think that's I think that's all of segment two. So we're gonna make an arrangement. So we have our vase, we have our things, and we want to decide how are we going to secure the flowers in this vase. I started with a canning jar because those seem to be pretty hot right now. One of the ways that you can secure your flowers into something like this so that they'll do what you want them to is you can make a collar out of larger leaved, um, larger leaved leaves. <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. So I have some ivy here. Uh, let me think. Ivy, ladies mantle, uh, even something like um, a red bud leaf. Uh, there are a lot of plants that have a peony leaves. There are a lot of plants that have a big leaf. And so you can take and um, place, um, even a hosta would work, yeah. Uh, you can place this in your vase. I always cut um, a, a fresh cut off of them before I put them in just because that opens up all the um, pores and everything so they can drink water again after they've been laying on the counter like this. So what I do is I'll make a, a collar of these leaves around my base and then I can easily place uh, stems through those leaves in, and make them stand up the way I want them to. Let me get a stem here and I can show you. So I can just pierce through that and then have it stand up where I want it. And it's not going to, you know, move around a lot. So you can use just a collar of greens if you want. And that's one way of securing your flowers. Also, you could um, use a, oh, let's see. You could use one of these um, pillow things, these little cages, and you could um, put that in your base, in the top of your base, and that would work like this. Sometimes you just want to uh, crisscross your stems too. You can take and just make a, an outline of 
foliage around, kind of like you did with that collar of, of ivy. And let's see. And you see how I'm I'm crossing these stems over each other. It's going to form a grid of stems that will secure the other stems. And frequently, I don't use a lot of, you know, um, mechanics in order to make my arrangements. I just make sure that my stems are crossing each other. And then you see how uh, that has formed, you know, a little grid in the bottom of the vase. So then you can put your flowers in, you can build up to the center of your vase. so that they'll stand up better. Well, that wasn't in the center. <laughs> Here we go. No, it's not. Okay, well, we'll just put some more stems in and then it will. There you go. Okay, so that's another option, okay? Um, let me see. If we did a solid face like this, like a compote type of thing, then we might wanna use one of these frogs in the bottom and that will the thing I like about the frog is, you see, it's got a layer of grids right here, and then it has a layer of grids that don't quite hit the bottom of the vase. So when I put it in here and I place a stem in here, it catches on the top, it catches on the top uh, hole, and it also catches on the bottom hole. So that gives it a lot more stability than if I just had a piece of, you know, a, a grid of tape across here. If I had a grid of tape across here, which is what I'm going to show you next, chances are when I put this through, this is going to pop up and it'll just ride along the bottom of the tape and it won't get water. So you want to make sure that your flowers are down into your vase and into the water. So I'm going to use the famous uh, mason jar again. Uh -oh. Why didn't I find this first? And then I'm going to find the edge. This is really tricky. I usually leave a little spot out. Here we go. Um, so I usually tape on something this small. Two, I leave the middle open and I do two strips on one, going one way. And then I'll do And then I'll do two strips going the other way so that the middle is open in case I want to put something right directly in the middle. And then I usually do a strip of tape around the top to secure all of those little things in place. So uh, that's another option. Um, the, the plastic pillows, we kind of, I mean, they're kind of like, they're kind of like the frog, only they mostly sit up on the top, you know, let me see, on the top of your, you know, your, your face. And you know, some people tape these in and stuff, but really once you get all of your stems in, you shouldn't have to tape it. And you can actually pull this out after it's all full of flowers and change the water really easily and give the stems a fresh cut, which you wouldn't be able to do if you taped it in. So I don't usually tape these in. Um, so the chicken wire, I wanted to show you on a, on a solid um, pot, the chicken wire that I would use I'm trying to kind of mimic the same thing as these frogs, where I have a little bit of space underneath my grid. So what I'll do is I'll bend this so that it has legs. And bend it this way too. And bend it this way too. And then I put this in so that it stands up a little bit on the bottom. There we go. And 
then I'll take the second one and I put that on top so that I have two layers of chicken wire. And then when I put my stems in here, the two layers will secure like this. Does that noise bother you? bother some people. So you see, when I put this in, and this is really way, way long, let me find a smaller piece here. When I put this, this placement in, uh, it will run along this chicken wire and the stem, see how it's, it's parallel to the table, but it runs along the bottom of the of the container and it will still get water where if I if I just ran a grid of tape across like I did on this um, mason jar this stem would be up riding underneath that tape sometimes though if you have something like this um, clear glass uh, cylinder you can't put a piece of chicken wire in here you can't put a frog in here you can't put one of those glue or those uh, little grid pillow things on it. So sometimes you want to take this and what I usually do with this is once again I'll leave this open in the middle and then I usually put four pieces of tape going one way and then perpendicular to these I'll do four pieces of tape too. And then um, it's usually pretty good for securing just about anything. And see, I like this clear tape because it doesn't show um, through the vase, you know, it just disappears. So when you get those on, sometimes you have really heavy flowers and they're really floppy and they don't want to cooperate. So sometimes it's necessary to go between all of those with one more row of tape. And that will usually do the trick. Let me tell you. Let's see if that one makes any more there. All right. And then I still go through and do a row around here. So sometimes you don't need that extra set, you know, that went in between, but every now and then you do. So uh, it's a good idea to, you know, try out your flowers first and see what you want. Um, if you have a lot of these that you're going to do and you have to do all that taping, it's a good idea to do it up ahead so that you're not like taping one, then doing the arrangement, then grabbing another one and taping it and then doing the arrangement. You know, if you lined them up assembly line, you'd have them done ahead of time. And I want you to notice my vases are all clean. I think it's really important uh, bacteria wise to have a clean vase. So bleach it out uh, after you finish using it so that it's ready to go the next time and you'll, your flowers will last a lot longer and you'll be much happier. Um, so let's see, one more thing I wanted to show you was this chicken wire, if I wanted to make and you see, these have bigger holes than these little pillow things. And I find that these are a little bit more um, accommodating with thicker stems. And if you want to put a couple stems in, uh, like if, I, if I'm going to do, let's say, 24 roses arranged, I don't think I have enough space on this one. And so I think I would rather have something like this. So what I'm going to do, I would make a an egg out of this and we usually cut this off because it makes a nicer um, uh, way to hook them together. So I'll just cut this off here and then I'll take these and I'll put them together like this and just twist. It does take a little bit of time where those little plastic things are all ready to go. But sometimes it's just, you just want what you want and you gotta figure out how to make it. So there we go. So 
I just twist these together so it's secure. And then I'll just bend these in and bend these in. And then I can probably pull this out. I hope it'll fit in this. Yeah. And then I can just, oops, I just wasn't very secure, was it? Oh boy, here we go, the blooper reel. <laughs> Um, let's see, pulled it just a little too tight there. All right. So that it'll sit, you know, right on the top here. And once again, when I want to take these flowers out to give them a fresh uh, cut, I can just pull this whole thing out because I'll be putting my, you know, my stems in through this way and this will hold them up and then I can just pull the whole thing out and um, give them a cut, dump the water out, put fresh water in, you know, get the base all clean and your flowers will last a lot longer. All right? Well, there we go.